That day, I was called to come down to 128 James Davis Lane in reference to a uh, shooting that had occurred. There was two people that was inside the residence that had been shot in the head. I had never seen anything like this before. We normally have maybe one murder every three to four years. Lying dead are Bill Payne and his fiance, Billie Jean Hayworth. He was 36. She was only 23. The couple had a baby boy named Tyler, who was found alive in his mother's arms. Billie Jean, she was small package, big punch. She had a great, big personality. Bill Payne was very charismatic. His personality definitely matched hers. It was very obvious to see that they were meant for each other. We began to interview the family and the friends, you know, just getting an idea of what do they think may have occurred or who might have done this to them. They asked, would there be anybody that you could think of that would want to cause harm to him? And everybody's answer was the same. They're like, well, no, we don't think anybody would want to hurt them, but this weird events have been happening. These weird events include incessant phone calls to Bill and Billie Jean's home and baseless harassment claims against the couple and their group of friends. The person allegedly behind these phone calls and complaints is a local woman, Janelle Potter. Janelle didn't really go anywhere without her mother and her father. She didn't have a driver's license. She didn't really seem to have much of a social life beyond her social circles online. Janelle's parents are strictly religious and protective of their daughter. When Bill meets the Potters, he helps expand Janelle's limited world. He welcomes her into his circle of friends, even introducing Janelle to his cousin, Jamie Curd. The two begin dating. Through the investigation, we learned that Jamie Curd was a very introverted person. By all accounts, it was really Jamie Curd's first girlfriend. We discovered that there was a feud between Janelle Potter and Billy and Billy Jean on social media. We wanted to go and conduct an interview with Janelle Potter, Barbara Potter, and Marvin Potter. Hey. Hey, Dad. I'll be right after. Just a second. All right, thanks. Janelle tells detectives that Bill and Billy Jean and their friends have been threatening her over the past few months. Why would they be harassing you? It came out to be a jealousy thing. They said I was too pretty, that I wasn't from here, so they were going to be accepted. Well, we want to make sure you didn't have nothing to do with No. You're not strong enough. Yeah, I, especially with a guy and a girl and a baby, why would I do that? By day two of the investigation, police get a tip from Bill's co-workers about Janelle's boyfriend and Bill's cousin, Jamie Curd. Hey, Mr. Curd. So we brought Jamie Curd into our office for an interview. I'm going to be straight up front with you, OK? You are one of the few people that we found that Billy's had any problems. You explained to me what kind of problems y'all were having. Well, I'm... He suggests Bill was upset that Jamie was still siding with Janelle after the fallout. It's our job to ask tough questions. Did you kill Billy or Billy Jean? No. No way. I can't marry him. Investigators run a polygraph test on Jamie Kerr. After testing you, Jamie, I know you know who killed those people. I don't. Tell us the truth. Who shot him? He who? Who had the gun? Hey. Jamie says the shooter was Marvin Buddy Potter and admits he was there when Marvin carried out the killings. At the end of that interview, he makes an offhand question before the camera turns off. Is the CIA here? CIA? No. No. They looked at each other and they thought, why would a CIA agent 
be involved with the Potters in the first place. Jamie claims he was recently contacted by a friend of Janelle's who said he worked for the CIA. Investigators find the story far-fetched. Have you met this person? Uh, you know, physically, but he's felt it. We need good buddy. Okay. Once he got through with the polygraph test, he was to go and call Barbara and Marvin to let them know how everything had went. Hello? Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. You all right? Yeah. And uh, buddy around? Under the direction of law enforcement, he questioned Marvin about getting rid of the evidence, getting rid of the gun. You got rid of everything. Okay. Yeah. We got the warrants issued for Marvin, a search warrant of the Potter residence. Police move in and take the Potter's computers, hard drives, and guns. Bullets were found in Marvin Potter's truck that had the same markings and were the same caliber and brand as the ones that were found at the scene. During the inventory of the truck, we located several bags of shredded paper. All that was secured, and it was sent to Knoxville, Tennessee, to be processed at the crime laboratory. Investigators question Marvin. Why do you think? That somebody told you I'm the one who killed somebody. Here's the thing. We don't think you killed. We know you killed. OK? I did. Wait a second. We have evidence. We have testimony. We have <laughs> you talking about it on tape. Me talking about on, it on, on a tape. recording. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Detectives chip away at Marvin for hours. And finally, cracks start to show. When you hear people plotting to take your, catch your daughter in murder her. In Marvin's mind, he was just protecting his daughter from the people who made violent threats against her. He felt justified in what he did to protect his family, and that's how it was framed. In your mind, you got no other choice, but No. Police charge Marvin Potter and Jamie Curd with first-degree murder and the killings of Bill Payne and Billie Jean Hayward. The Johnson County Sheriff's Department, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, they really could have stopped whenever they arrested Marvin Potter. It would have been very easy to say, you know, we've got our guy, let's close it out. But the big thing that broke this case for us was the shredded documents that were just by dumb luck in the back of Marvin Potter's truck. At the TBI lab in Knoxville, Tennessee, they put almost 174 of those pages back together. We kept seeing emails and messages signed by this person named Chris. Chris warns Janelle that Bill and Billie Jean are out together. He also makes contact with Barbara. We did find correspondence between Barbara and this Chris. Janelle and Barbara allegedly share every word of Chris's story with Janelle's boyfriend, Jamie Curd and her dad, Marvin. It was obvious that Barbara gave all that information to her husband and just kept feeding it to him. As investigators dig through hundreds of emails from Chris, they make a surprising discovery. We kept seeing his name associated with the CIA. All of a sudden, Jamie Curd asking, is the CIA here? That made so much more sense. But looking at the communications, this CIA agent was barely literate. Looking at those records is when we were able to figure out that Janelle Potter created a CIA agent that she named Chris. It, it frankly just blew me away. Janelle is Chris. And her CIA alias had a purpose. We believe that Janelle was using this Chris slash CIA 
to manipulate her father into believing that Billy and Billy Jean were causing her trouble. Janelle had a crush on Billy, and I think that she got to the point to where she was jealous that he was dating Billy Jean, and her jealousy became more aggressive, which just escalated it all the way up to this happening. We needed to charge Janelle and Barbara Potter with the murders of Billy Payne and Billy Jean Hayward. They were completely shocked. They explained to us over and over and over that they had nothing to do with anything. Both Janelle and Barbara plead not guilty. Nothing about this case really made sense. But just because you can't make sense of it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Marvin Potter's trial was much more straightforward. Marvin's trial lasts five days, and he decides not to testify. After just three hours of deliberation, the jury declares Marvin guilty as charged. The judge gives him two consecutive life sentences. Jamie Curd was offered a plea deal based on his cooperation with the state and his testifying against Janelle and Barbara in the second trial. We offered him a facilitation of first degree murder, and he pled to two counts of that and received 25 years. Two years after the family patriarch faces justice, the Potter women go on trial for their hand in the murders. Barbara and Janelle Potter are each found guilty of two counts of first degree murder and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Barbara and Janelle are each given two consecutive life sentences. <laughs> 